So margins are critical. We have mergers. This is where two companies come together. So let's say that company A plus company B, when they come together, they form a new company that was not existing before. So this is a totally new company that is being formed. So that means that the A and B will lose their identity. A good example is when NCBA was formed. It was formed out of CBA Bank and NIC. Both NIC and CBA died. And so they formed a new company, which is a totally new entity called NCBA, right? So that is merger. And then we have acquisition. This is where two companies come together one dies, but another one survives. For example, Diamond Trust Bank and Imperial Bank. Diamond Trust Bank acquire Imperial Bank. So the DTB is still there, but Imperial Bank is not there, right? So one company can acquire another one that is struggling so that they can actually uh, take up their resources, right? So that one is a good example, or maybe take example of a cut and rat. When you have the two meet, the rat and cat, rat will definitely get consumed. So at the end of the day, you will have a very fat or satisfied cat, but the rat will not be there. It's a cool one. So that is how acquisition is. So acquisition means that one takes over the other one, it will no longer be there. But the one that has acquired, the acquirer remains. So that is what it means. Now, in this particular unit, you need to have, in this particular topic, you need to understand the concept of acquisition. That one you now know. We have another concept for call. Um, uh, we have target company. That is the one that's being acquired. So you need to have target company. In this example, it is the right. It is the one that is taken over. And then we have another one called uh, predator. So predator is the one that is taking over. It is the acquirer. It is the one that is called acquire. So it is the one that is taking over the other company. Okay, now let's take example that a company has taken over another one. So what will happen? Remember, the one that is being acquired has got some directors or shareholders who have injected money in that business. They have shareholders who have injected money in that business. These shareholders are going to be stranded and even employees are there. So they are going to be taken over. Those shareholders have their shares in that company. So let's take example that A is acquiring B. So we have shareholders in B. Where will they go? They will have to buy shares from A, meaning that they are going to be given an offer. So they are going to buy the A's share so that they become shareholders in A because B is going to die. B is not going to be there anymore. So when they are closing over, they have to buy shares. That is number one. Number two, we have a concept of purchase. Now the purchase can be done in two ways. A will buy B, right? When A buys B, there are two ways, there are three ways. They can buy the form of loan, which is called debenture. They are telling them that we don't have money, but all your assets will take, but we'll pay you in terms of loan. So you are not coming to be part of us as shareholders, but you are coming, we are taking your assets, you are going to give us on credit those assets. So to the court, to the court, to the So it is in terms of loan. That is called the venture. We also have another one called share exchange. Share to share exchange. In this one, they are going to have all the shareholders transferring their shares here. So every share that you have here, you transfer it here. That is share to share. They are not giving any money. They are not taking as loan, but all the shareholders are going to be shareholders in, in A. So it is a share to share exchange. The third one, they can take over using cash. They can pay. This one, one liter your cash, and then they take over. Now, in exams, most of the time, they'll be setting you the two. The first one will be this, but then to some extent, they also include this one. The previous example that we did yesterday, we were having 2019, we did 2019 paper, 
and also 2017, where they were testing the two. But today, we are going to use a very simple one because of the time. I forgot to tell you my name. My name is Sipia Dennis. I teach FM at NTC College. So, uh, let's look at another thing. Now, when one company is taking over, remember, for example, I've given you A and B. So, A is taking over B. What will happen? The shares that are here are going to be taken over, but the A is taking B because B has problems. B has problems. So that means that probably the management is poor or even the dividends that they are paying is also low. So when they're taking over, they can't be one-on-one. -on -one. It can't be that when you are taking over, you are able to actually exchange your shares so that you have to be at, you bring them and own to be at home. Our at Asema, you are coming over, but we are not equal with you. So every share that you have in B, ukikuja kwetu itakuwa kama nusu. Aha, we are not equal because your company has problems. So as you come, just know that for every share that you have there, when you come on our side, you can consider that share to be a half. So that means that what is called now exchange ratio, they are going to exchange the shares from here to this one. They are going to have an exchange ratio of maybe a half. So that is a concept of exchange ratio. How do we calculate exchange ratio for companies that are being taken over? So we have this one called target. And the one that is being targeted, this one is called predator, is the one that is consuming the other. So exchange ratio, which we can always say exchange ratio, is equal to the EPS of the target or lower EPS of the predator. This one will give you the maximum exchange ratio. Yani ile ratio wana is Remember this guy is saying that B is weak. B has problems, that's why they are being taken over. They have problems. So the letters of A are fearing that if we take B, we are going to have so much shareholders on our company A, so we are going to divide the little dividends that we have. We are going to divide amongst us, and it is going to be diluted. So because we don't want to dilute, we'll actually reduce the number of shares that we are bringing to board. So kila mwenye ya kona two shares, atakuja hapa and uwe moja. That means that for every one share here, is equivalent to on this other side. So that means that every one share that you are taking in A will be equivalent to that you have in. So that we reduce the number of shareholders. So that at the end of the day, we don't liquidate, we don't, we don't dilute our shares. So that is why the ratio is very important. So there is maximum exchange ratio that the directors in A can accept to get from B, the maximum exchange ratio. So the maximum exchange ratio is now what we get by EPS all over EPS of the predator, the EPS of the target all over the EPS of the predator. That is the maximum exchange ratio. And so we also have the maximum offer price. We also have maximum offer price. So what does this mean? That when A is buying B, there is amount that they can accept above which they don't agree. For example, if you are going to the market and you are bargaining, there is amount that you're able to pay. So the seller akikata una jana na yuko kusili ona mambia this the maximum I can offer now. So that is what is called maximum offer price. That is the money that A can afford to give so that they can acquire B. That money might not be paid in cash. It might be paid in shares or in loans, but there must be an offer price, expected amount that you can offer. So we have seen things here. Number one, you need to understand the concept of exchange ratio. That is for the shares that are being traded or being changed, and the amount that A is offering, the maximum offer price. Now, maximum offer price is now what we are going to look at here, right? It is also called, it's also called non-diluting. It is the amount that when they give, they cannot actually dilute the shares. Non-diluting offer, offer price. Non-diluting offer price. 
Now, how do we get the maximum overpriced owner and the reducing overpriced? Maximum overpriced that A can afford or non diluting overpriced. It is normally equal to the EPS, this formula, the way it is EPS of target all over EPS of predator times MPS, that is market price per share of the predator. Remember, predator also have the price in the market and they are comparing. So, the maximum offer price is the EPS of the target or lower EPS of the predator times the NPS of the predator. This one is market price. It is the market price of the predator. So that means that when predator A is going to buy, they are also considering how much they are they trading themselves in the market. So they are going to evaluate what they are expecting to pay with what they are actually valued at in the market. So therefore, Maximum offer price, which is also called non diluting offer price, that price you can get it by having the exchange ratio, that is the maximum exchange ratio, maximum exchange ratio, which can be gotten like this. So it is the maximum exchange ratio times the APS of the predator. That is the maximum offer price. You're not seeing. So sorry for that. So that is the maximum offer price. Maximum offer price, the exchange ratio, which is this one. That's how we can get it. Maximum exchange ratio all over. So maximum exchange ratio times APS of the predator. That is now what we call the maximum offer price. That's the amount that A can let go so that they can actually buy B. Now let's look at this particular question. We have Chilulu Industry Limited. So Chilulu Industry Limited is considering acquisition of Roca Corporation Limited in a share for share exchange. The financial data, the financial data for the two companies are given as below. So we have Chilulu Limited. Chilulu Limited is not willing to incur an initial dilution in its shares, EPS meaning that they don't want to dilute their shares. So that means that whatever exchange ratio they're going to accept, it must be at the non-diluting exchange ratio and also non-diluting offer price. They don't want to dilute their shares. Chilul Limited is the one that is taking over. It is like A in this case. But when they are taking over Roca, they don't want that impact to dilute their shares. So that means that they want to have non diluting offer price or also non diluting, -diluting uh, acceleration. That is number one. Number two, Chilulu Limited will have to offer a minimum of 20% of Roca Limited. That is the, mark, the minimum they are able to offer. But what about the maximum offer? They are giving us minimum offer, which is 25% of the current shares price. The current NPS. Remember, we have NPS for the uh, for, for Chilulu Limited, which is the predator. But also we have NPS for the uh, target company. Now, the minimum they can offer is 25% of the current shares of the target company, the current market share, sorry, market share price. So this one, 25%, this is what the minimum they can offer, 25% of Rockers current share market price. So the current share market price is 40, meaning that 25% of this, that is 10, 10 million, that is the minimum they can offer. But what is the maximum they can offer? The maximum offer price, that one we are not given. So we can be able to calculate our own maximum offer price. They have given us the minimum offer price. Then we know now between there, between maximum and minimum, any amount there is okay with them. Because they are able to buy at, let's say, you are able to buy that cloth at 800 or 1,000. So if you can able to buy at 800, between 800 to 1,000, that means that 800 is the minimum, but 1,000 is the maximum offer price. So any price within that range should be okay with you as the buyer, right? That is what they're trying to say. So they are trying to let you calculate the maximum so that you also compare with the minimum. Then you can know the range. Right? 
the range at which they can always agree on. The next thing they are telling you that now require the relevant offer price. Relevant offer price. So this is the maximum offer price. Okay, so how do we get the offer price? Maximum offer price, which is now the non-negative. Why is it maximum offer price? Because in the first question, they are saying they told us that Tilu is not willing to incur an initial dilution. If they don't incur, that is mean that means that they want non-diluting offer price. And for us to get the non-diluting offer price, we need now to calculate it. We need now to calculate it. So that is the relevant offer price must be a non-diluting offer price because it is the offer price that is not going to dilute anything, the EPS. So that is how we can know that they are specifically asking for non-diluting offer price. That is the relevant offer price. Now, when you look at this, uh, this particular uh, uh, equations that you are given, it means that we need to know EPS because for us to calculate maximum offer price, we have to get some concept of EPS. There's no way we can do it without that. And even when you're looking at the exit ratio, we need to get the EPS for each company. Now, in the question, we are not given EPS. They have not given us EPS. What they have given us, they have even given us DPS. They have given us the sales. They have given us the earnings, which is the net. They have given us the number of shares. They have given us the MPS and DPS. That is the dividend per share. So we need to calculate our own EPS so that we can fix them here. What is EPS? EPS is basically earnings per share. So how do we get earnings per share for each company? That is where we start from. You cannot do this question without EPS. So EPS, let me split the board. So EPS is equal to total annual. You can write this all over total number of shares. So the total number of shares that participated in that earning. That is why it is earning per share, earning per share, right? So that means that we need to go and ask for our, ourselves, Chilulu. So Chilulu, what is the EPS for Chilulu? So Chilulu, we have total earning, which is 30. And then we have ordinary shares, which is six. So it is 30 over six. And then the other one is 12 over two. Two seven. So we have total earnings 30 million, all over six million. That is for Chilunu. And then we have EPS for, uh, we have for Roca, which is now the target. It is 12 million, all over two million. Let me just show you again, just to confirm. Not net earnings are the total earnings. We have 30 and 20 and 12, sorry. Number of ordinary shares, these are the shares outstanding, the, the shares that contributed to that earning. We have six and two. So we are okay. Now we can get our EPS here. This one is going to be five. Right, this one is going to be six. So this means that we can easily get the exchange ratio, maximum exchange ratio. Therefore, maximum exchange ratio, which you can write like that, is equal to EPS of the target of the target for lower EPS of the predator, which is the same as the target is this one. It's a bit, the one that's being taken over. The one that's being taken targeted. So this one is going to give us 1.2, right? That is a maximum exchange ratio. But then we say that the maximum offer price, maximum offer price, is equal to maximum exchange ratio times MPS of the 
predator. Or you can say it is equal to a EPS of target or lower EPS of P times times the predator times APS of the predator. That is what we say. Yeah? And I'll use this because maximum exit ratio can be gotten like this. It is this one here. So either use this or just calculate the ratio there. So this means that our maximum overprice, if they don't want to dilute, which is also called non dilutive overprice, the maximum overprice, which is also called non dilutive overprice, we also call it maximum overprice. Is now we have the exchange ratio that is six all over five times what is the MPS? The MPS because this one is just EPS of the predator uh, of EPS of the target over EPS of the predator times the MPS of MPS of the predator. We can get it from here. MPS of the predator that is MPS fifty. We have it here, MPS of the predator 50. So we have 50. That means that our maximum is 60 million. They are able to pay a minimum of a maximum of 60 million. All right. So that is the first question. They were asking us, the first question was asking. The relevant offer price range, the range. So we know the maximum they can offer. The minimum we are told, the minimum they can offer is 25% of Rocker Limited. The Rocker Limited's current share market price is this one. This is the market price share, 40. It is the market price, right? So we can know it is market price per share. So it is 40. So we can also get, we have gotten the maximum, we can get the minimum. Minimum offer price. Is equal to 25% of 40. That's giving us 10 million. So therefore range. A uh, Chibulu can accept to buy a rocker at anything between 10 meaning that anything that is more than 10, because 10 is the minimum. So either equal to or more than 10, to sixty less than, more than, less than, uh, so anything that is between this, between these two. So you can say to 60, uh they cannot go about 60 right so anything below 60 is there is the correct one so we can have anything below below 60 right where 60 is, is great so that is anything below 60 below or equal to 60. now that is the range that is the range so that means that the range between these anything that is equal to 10 or above 10 up to anything that is equal or below 60 because they can offer maximum 60, they cannot pay above that. Now that's the range, that is the range. So that is where the offer price is. Are you okay up to there? Confirm to me that uh, you're okay up to there. Great. So if that is the case, then we can go to question number three. So that is the first one. You can go to question number two. So that one, that one was giving you four marks. 
Now they are saying that if Rockers Limited share shareholders accept an offer an offer by Chilulu of forty, if they accept offer of forty for share exchange, determine the post mergers and per share forty. So what is the new exchange ratio? If if they accept to take forty, meaning that Chilulu has accepted to offer. 40 per share, they are able to buy it at 40. So that means that they are exceeding at what rate? Now, maximum exit ratio, we say that you can, it can be gotten through this. Alternatively, you can get it maximum exit ratio. It can also be gotten by getting offer price. Uh, non, uh, we call it non diluting offer price or lower MPS of the predator. So we can test this. We are trying to say that you can either get maximum exchange ratio by having non diluting offer price or lower MPS of the predator, or you can use EPS of the target or lower EPS of the predator. Our non-diluting offer price was this one. So can we prove that is this? Let's come here and do a test. We have MPS of the predator we were given. MPS of the predator was 50. So we had 50. All over. Maximum offer price was 60. 60. This one is giving us 6 over 5, which is the same as this one. So that means that if you have the non diluting offer price, which is the maximum offer price is 60 over MPS of the predator, which is this one here, 50, you can get six over that. That is the ratio for maximum exchange ratio. Now that is maximum exchange ratio, but we have other exchange ratio, which is not maximum. So any exchange ratio is just offer price all over MPS of the predator. Only maximum exchange ratio you can get by having specifically non diluting offer price. But other exchange ratio you can still get by just having offer price that you're given all over MPS of the predator. So this means that if this is the exchange ratio that could not dilute, we have some other exchange ratio that can still be used, though they can dilute the EPS of the predator, but they are also exchange ratio. So the exchange ratio can be gotten as this. New exchange ratio under the new agreement. You have seen, we were advising them to have 60 as the maximum, but they are saying that they can actually do with 40. That 40 is not the maximum, but it can also be good because it's paying less. So the new exchange ratio, if they agreed on 40, you can say that new exchange ratio is equal to 40 or lower 50. That is end offer, offer new offer price or lower MPS of a predator. Right? That is 40 is the new offer price that we are told. That is what the examiner has said. The examiner has said that that if, if they agree on 40 per share, that is a new offer price and offer by Chilulu is 40. So our MPS of the predator still remains 50. So we can get that, right? So this means that the new exit ratio will be four over five. That is the new exit ratio. Now, they are asking us post acquisition EPS. How did we get EPS? We say that EPS is equal to total earnings all over the total shares, right? So that, so that we have the total earnings after acquisition, we are taking uh, Rocker Limited together with its shares and earnings. 
So our new earning will be the earning for Roca plus the earning for Chilulu. So our total earning will be earning for the two companies. So that is E for the first one and then E for the second one. Because now we are a family, we are a group. So we have the total earning as the two earnings plus the shares, number of shares or notes for the first company, which has not been affected. But the shares for the second company, which is Roca, has been affected. We agree that you bring them on this rate. Every share that you have divided by this. So we are going to have the shares for the second one, the second company times four over five, because that is the new exchange ratio. That is the new exchange ratio. So that is how they are going to be, so that we have what are we given there? Net is 30 plus 12. Then we have shares 50 plus 40. So net is going to be 30. That is the net earnings 30 plus 12 all over 50 plus 40. But this 40 is now times the exchange ratio 4 over 5. So that we have 42 all over. This one, if you divide it's eight, eight times that one, 32, 32 plus 50, that is 82, right? A book on family is a common 82. Yes, I will go so that means that the new EPS is about how much? Get me the new EPS now. Is it the new EPS or MPS? The new post equation earnings major earnings per share, post major earnings per share. So that is EPS, the new EPS for the, the group at the family. Calculate for me that. Yes, I will go No, 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 we are using wrong shares. It should be, it should be six. The number of outstanding, outstanding shares are six and 12, not 40. What is the MPS? So we are supposed to have, here, six is six million. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's change that. Uh, it should be number of shares that we are working with at this one six million and two. Mayana, six million and two. Those are the number of shares. You have 15 MPS, not, not shares, market shares. So it is six plus two. So it is just two divided by that. And then now calculate, calculate now. It's going to be this one times this is uh this one divided by this is 0 0.4. 0 0.4 times this 1.6. So 1.6 plus this. So it is 7.6. These are the shares. Eh? We are supposed to use shares. And now, now work with that. Divide 42, divide by this. Now, we are supposed to have shares, number of shares, number of shares. So, from the question, it's actually 6 million of it. Now cut up 50, yes. So it is becoming 5.53. Now that is the new EPS. So if the new EPS is 5.3, right? What about the other one? Is it diluting or it is not diluting? If the original EPS, the original EPS that we calculated has gone down, how much do you calculate as the original EPS? From your notes. For A, for, 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 for Chiludo, then compare with this. 
Ikienda chini, then it is diluted. Kama imeenda juu, that is good. It has not been diluted. Unajua, to dilute ni kupoteza lada. Sileo? That means that if your shilling will, if your share will give you two pop, lakini sasa inakupea, maybe a half, then it is diluted. If it was four pop, it is now giving you three pop, it is diluted. But if the shares were giving you, every share, each share, that's earning per share, was giving you like six, lakini sasa inakupea eight, then it is non diluted, right? But the maximum is the one the, is, the, is the one that does not dilute. So original EPS required that you to do it. Original EPS required five. See you. EPS for the predator was five. EPS for the predator was five, but now it is five point three. So that means that we are not diluted. In fact, in the second, why? Because we bought at a lower price. We were supposed to buy at 60 bob, but we bought at 40. So I had to be a potesa for you, Yashara. That is why the APS has gone up. Now let's look at the last part of the question, then you can take a break. The last part is saying using the results obtained in C above, using the results obtained in C above. And assuming that Chilulu, Chilulu's price earning ratio will be will remain unchanged after the merger, determine the post acquisition market price of share of a share of Chilulu Limited. So using this one, what's the price earning ratio? Price earning ratio. Is the FPS all over the total? Earning per share. So uh, we had the first one, price earning ratio. This is the FPS price. Price earning ratio is equal to MPS per share all over EPS per share. The current one that we are having, we had calculated the EPS to be five. Then MPS was 50. So this one is giving us 50. That is the ratio, the earning. PE, the current PE is this one. So they are asking, using the results above, and assuming that Chilulu post earning PE ratio will remain unchanged after the merger. So the PE before the merger, that is the post, the PE will remain. Because if they are saying that it will remain unchanged, that means that the one that was before and even after are the same. So if it is unchanging, then mean, that means that this ratio is like this before and even after. Now they're asking you that calculate, determine the post acquisition market price of a share of Chilulu Limited. So what is the new EPS? New EPS, right? So the new EPS is they are asking for the new MPS. Yes, determine the post earning. Now determine the post MPS after. So that's MPS after acquisition. This is an rise. So if before acquisition, NPS was 50, right? So if 50, which is the NPS, was giving you EPS of 5. This one is EPS. This one is NPS. This one. Then what will be the new NPS if you now have 5.53? 5 
This is the this is the EPS after acquisition, but this is the EPS before. So they are telling you what is now the APS after. So this one is basically like this. It's now 50 times 5.53 over 5. Then you get your new NPS or what is called for acquisition. NPS is that one. In other words, in other words, you can say that post acquisition NPS is equal to the PE ratio times the post acquisition EPS. So the PE ratio is given there as 50 all over. Five times the post acquisition EPS, which is 5.53. What are you getting? So, my Leon Apple, they're telling you that assuming that those things don't change. So, if before pre acquisition we had 50 EPS giving us or equal to 5 EPS, then how much? Are we going to have with our new yes? So it is like that. This one should give us the same thing. So a position EPS can also be gotten by just having a formula to say the PE ratio and the position EPS. What we are looking for is now the new PE. The new so it is five point five five point three, right? The same as five. 5.3. That is the new or the post acquisition market price per share. That is what they wanted. You can get it through that. So they were asking to determine the post acquisition market price of a share of Chiru Limited. So now we are not talking about Roca because Roca had died a long time. Now we are talking about Chiru, which has survived after the merger. So that is what basically it is. So you can either argue like this, or you can show that you are a finance person, give them the formula. The answer is the same. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Dennis. I teach FM, and I still have a class in audit at once on it. So we can still meet in class. You can get us through our contact 07. This is my direct contact 525 000. You can get us through this, right? For more classes, we are starting a new topic. This one we have done. This is the last lesson that I was having. I want to share with our class. Those who are not able to attend, so that we start a new topic that is advanced financial decision in our next class. Thanks so much. Do you have any question? Our contact uh, is 0799525000. Any question?